All right, Go Produce, here we are with episode number six of the Reflection Series. My name is Big Lou. This is Go Produce. This is the podcast where we explore how music industry professionals turn their passions into profit. I'm super excited for you to be here because we've got so much learning to do today. Today, we're going to be talking about producers and engineers. We're going to be covering the topics that we discussed with the previous guests that we've had from seasons one, two, and three. We're going to be summarizing all of that and presenting it to you here in a nice, fun, exciting episode. Make sure to check in every single Wednesday as we release new episodes weekly. Also, make sure to listen till the end because I've got three main takeaways that you do not want to miss out on. Hit them with the intro. I could tell you how I felt walking into the studio that first time. I was so, so excited, but also so nervous. I had no idea what I was doing. Maybe, maybe this will help you. Let's hear what the lads at the Kingdom Studios got to say. Well, first thing, it's like personality, right? So like, before any artist, like I get on a call with them and like this is like, you know, something Ash and I have done, like we we at least talk to them first because a lot of people see the things that we have and the stuff that we're doing. So like, oh, man, like I want to work with you. Like, how do I work yeah. with you? Yeah. So before I do anything, it's always having a phone call because you just want to like catch a vibe. And it's like, do we see, do we could we compute? Like, do I want to have a beer with this person? Like, I like I want to have that feeling with them and then I'm more likely to work with them. And I think from there, if you feel like you have a good vibe, then like I'm always open to making music because you know, there's things that you're going to teach them. And one of the things that I love working with people is like that feeling of like, you took their idea and brought it to reality. Yeah. And sometimes people are like, oh, I just want to get in and do this or that. But then you're like, no, when you actually see what we can create, that's like the beauty. And I just love that feeling when they're like, man, like, I can't believe you just did that. It's true. I think there's a lot of different boxes that you sort of look at when you're, when you're talking with an artist and they don't have to necessarily check off every box at that time, but could they? You yeah. know, so for us, Potential. you know, like you said, personality and, and vibe is so important. And I tell this to young artists sometimes is, you know, if you're a three out of 10 on the talent scale, that's fine. Because I know that you give us eight months with you, 12 months with you. I know that we can take you from a three out of 10 to at least a seven, five out of 10 in like a year. It's a huge leap. Eight out of 10. But what I can't do is if you're difficult to work with and other people around you, you just have like a certain abrasiveness to your personality. I can't make you be a cool person. Like that has to be something that you already have. Yeah. And you got to be looking at that from the you know the consumers and fan base perspective as well like are you going to be the guy that just rubs people the wrong way so we kind of got out of the the realm of like hey let's just have like a space where they can book out hourly and anybody can come through here now we're like let, let's be a little more selective with who Filter. we bring in here and yeah yeah was that simpler than you thought it would be being relaxed calm cool collected yourself casual it really it really goes such a long way something else you want to keep in mind when you're going to the studio is be prepared you want to be prepared you got to rehearse your verse you know practice 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 we spoke about this earlier you've got to practice your songs before you go in as an artist or as a musician come on and it goes beyond just practice make sure all of your files are organized be ready have them on a usb or email drive whatever make sure it's ready to go so you're not wasting anyone's time remember studio time is paid time and artists do you ever wonder what you should be looking for in a studio let's hear what tokyo's got to say so if you have a regular room with very little absorption uh, and regular diffusion the most obvious problem you're going to have is like around that 160 hertz range where you're going to have these waveforms clashing with each other and then phasing out. I mean, that's that's science. That's the science of what's happening, right? Like, let's say you have an audio gun and you blast uh, a waveform, just a sinusoidal waveform at 80 hertz, and it hits that wall, a perfectly flat wall that's perfectly parallel to me. It's going to come right back to me, right? And 80 hertz is 80 cycles per second. 80 cycles per second is a certain amount of inches or whatever. I don't know the... Yeah. the but the speed of sound is what, four thousand something or other so Quite if you quick. multiply the speed of sound by the cycles per second you get the inch length of that specific waveform if you math it out it's going to hit that wall bounce back and then whether or not it hits in phase with itself right or out of phase with itself it'll either double in amplitude or phase and cancel out Tokyo Spears, mix engineer from Walk Off the Earth, tells us that if you're an artist walking into a studio to do a recording session, and if they do not have much absorption in the room, then that might be a sign to like not do your recording there. Keep that in mind. I like to talk to all these different kinds of people because I want to understand the whole industry as a whole. I really think it is critical for professionals to be able to understand most, if not all, of the music industry in order to excel in it. You do not have to be a specialist in everything. Let's be real. You can't do that. But you should be able to properly communicate with your production team. Once the specialists have their thoughts and ideas in mind, 
then they can go about doing their work. Do not micromanage them. Everyone's got their specialty. Work in your specialty and make sure everyone's working towards the same goal. There's a very high chance that they might know something that you don't know that makes your product stronger. Did you know Dejan Martineau shared with us a couple of tips on how his beat making was influenced by classical training? Um, okay, so beat making is a it's a really interesting thing, beat making, because it really comes from DJ culture. And DJ culture is usually sampling and splicing up pre-existing stuff. Now, it my classical training has definitely affected me, whether it's for the better or the worse, I don't know. Um, because I listen to one of my favorite hip hop groups is Far Side. And if you listen to the Far Side, they completely ignore keys and structure. They will lamp, they will layer samples that are completely off key and it works for them and it sounds amazing, but I could never do that in my track. I wonder how many of you actually knew that because I for sure did not. That being said, I admit that there's so much more that I do not know and I'm not even aware of what I don't know. There's so much out there that I'll never know. However, that's not gonna stop me from getting out there and learning from, from feeding my curiosity. How can we possibly learn about things that we don't even know that we don't know? The simple answer is through communication. We've got this ability to do so. To do, do so. <laughs> We've got this ability to do so. So why not not even exploit it, but make use of it and learn from each other's stories and experiences. This is what we're doing here. This is what I'm sharing with you. This is how I'm growing. This is the basis of mentorship. Nigel Aslan tells us of a time where he was interning for Garth Richardson. I mean, it all started. I went to uh, music industry arts in London, Ontario at Fanshawe College. Um, I ended up there after going through college for something else. And uh, not really enjoying it and realizing that I really wanted to do music. So I was like, I'm going to go back to school at 24 uh, to take another program. And uh, being one of the older students there, um, you know, I, I was just really motivated to make my second run through college a little bit more productive than my first run, which was probably just a lot of drinking and, and, and not being productive. So my goal then was trying to, trying to figure out what I was going to do and who I was going to work for. And Garth Richardson actually came through our school and did a guest lecture. I, uh, then convinced one of my teachers who was his friend to let me chat with him like afterwards and yeah. and try and try and secure an internship. Um, and I reached out to him and he was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me know when you're in Vancouver and, and I'll put you to work for sure. Um, and and Garth had a history of of not um, of interns not surviving. So every year someone from Fanshawe would go out there and every year, two weeks later, they would come back um, and not be able to hack it. And uh um, so yeah, so it had been 10 years since he really kept anyone. Um, and I, I liked my odds, you know, one in 10 would, could be, you know, a, a decent, <laughs> decent Not odds of success. Chance. Um, and so then, uh, I kept in touch with him through my final year of Fanshawe. And when I reached out to him, probably about like March of 2009, when I would be almost graduating, I was like, Hey, I'm going to come to van. I'm going to do it. Like, I still want to make sure that there's some work there for me. And he's like, actually, no. I got nothing for you. After a whole story of trying to get an internship with Garth Richardson, he was finally able to secure it. And not only was he able to secure it, but he holds the record of the shortest internship period with Garth before being hired, not fired. A couple of takeaways that Nigel shared with us is that you've got to ask yourself, what level do you want to play at? Are you committed? Or are you interested? Once you can answer that question, you'll have a better idea of what you're willing to do. The potential relationships and experiences that you can gain from finding a mentor or being an intern or just finding a way so that you can like be in an area where you're just absorbing knowledge will prove to be beneficial in the short term and in the long term. But you ever wonder what it's like to get the mentor's perspective? Let's hear what Garth Richardson has to say about his mentoring period with Nigel. What about yeah. Nigel Aslan? Do you remember him? <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, Nigel, 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 Nigel is up here helping me build the Mecha studio, right? So uh, uh, him and I had a long conversation about this. So <laughs> then I'm glad that you brought, brought up his name. He, he literally showed up called me up and said, oh, I'm, I'm coming out to Vancouver. And I said, yeah, great. You know, you have a job, but no job. So he comes out, he calls me, he shows up to my, uh, my to studio and he has resumes for all the other studios except for mine. I went, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? You know, dude. So he basically, he didn't leave. And it's the one thing that all you kids have to understand out there is this 
isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. This is something that you love. The money money will come. You want to get a job that's going to pay you money. You get into banking. You get into insurance, and live a really boring, horrible life. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Or if you want to get into this business, it is a, a it's a hard grind. It's a it's an incredible hard hard grind. Uh, I probably worked probably three quarters of my life right? Because you, you spend from actually 10 a.m. until four in the morning every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday to Monday to Monday to Monday to Monday. <laughs> but Nigel, uh, the, uh, Nigel showed up. He thought he knew everything and I beat the shit out of him. And he basically, he's done well. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so, you know, you know, so uh, you have to have somebody like that, that really kind of wants it bad, right? I'm not sure if you heard that fully, so I'll say it again. This isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. This is going to be incredibly difficult. You will be working the majority of your life, so you may as well be doing something you love. But the question is, are you willing to put yourself through the rigor of being able to do that? Do you want to see the other side? How badly do you want to see the other side? But remember, no matter where you go, it's not a sprint. If you are really about this lifestyle, you're in it for the long haul. And if you're in it for the long haul, you're going to have to play with the mental game too, because there are a lot of times where things just hit the fan and, and it's no longer pleasant. But how are you working on your mental? Are you doing something a little bit every day to improve on that? Dan Broadbeck says that the best people are always constantly trying to improve on themselves. The people that last a long time and are really, really that I would look up to, um, they never think they're done. Like they are always trying to reinvent themselves or they're always trying to prove themselves to people and uh, get better. And like, I like athletes that think like that. I like, I like, I don't care who they are. I don't care if you're just a person that makes a fence. I, I <laughs> care if you're like, you want to be the best you can be all the time and get better at it. That's people. The best people always think like that. Every experience that is lived is a lesson. Whether it was a good or a bad experience, you've got to put yourself in the perspective to learn from it. There's always an opportunity for growth, regardless of how hard it is to see it at the beginning even. There's always an opportunity for growth. My question for you is, what are you going to do when it comes knocking? Are you going to be ready to go? In order to be ready to go, you're going to want to constantly work on yourself every day. Be prepared. Don't get prepared. How do you be prepared? You start today. You start now with one small task. You build on that task. You continue at it. You make sure that you do it every single day. It's a non-negotiable. That brings us right into our three main takeaways for the episode. Takeaway number one, be prepared with your craft. I can't say it enough. Practice, practice, practice. Do not waste your time. Do not waste your engineer's time. Do not waste the time of the people around you because time is worth more than anything else. Takeaway number two, familiarize yourself with industry terms. If they can't communicate with you what they need to, how are you going to communicate with them what you need to? This miscommunication never results in a win. Main takeaway number three, find ways to bring value to people who can potentially mentor you. This way you can level up faster. You can also find mentors online for free just through YouTube channels. This is the method that I've used because my budget was incredibly low, living in the red, you know how it is. But even without a budget, you can do this. Next week, I'll be reflecting on the conversations that I had with songwriters and composers throughout seasons one to three. I hope to see you there this next week, Wednesday. Big shout out to all parties involved. Big shout out to Prevail Media Group. The facility is beautiful. Big shout out to our sponsors who are coming there right around the corner. I know I see you. I know I see you. I'm waiting for you. And big shout out to our viewers. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you at all enjoyed this, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so that you can be notified every single Wednesday when we release new episodes for you. Don't forget, we're trying to turn your passion into profit. This is exactly what I'm going to be doing, and I want you to do it with me. Before we go, make sure to hit us with a comment in the comment section. Tell us what you learned, what your favorite takeaway was. And if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up there as well. That's it. That's everything. We out. Ooh.